Well, for more on this, I'm joined live by our international affairs editor, Philip Turl. Philip, uh, what are the U.S. and U.K. hoping to get out of these discussions? Well, on paper, it all looks pretty positive for uh, both sides, uh, specifically for the United Kingdom. If uh, the U.K. can get a trade agreement with the United States, that will certainly uh, look good for all those who were in favour of Brexit, because one of the campaign uh, ploys during the Brexit campaign was, of course, to strike trade deals with other countries outside the European Union. Now, uh, trade with the uh, United States, between Britain and the United States, uh, is estimated to be 253 billion euros a year. The aim of this trade deal is to boost that by at least 17 billion euros a year. And British officials say that it will be particularly beneficial for the Midlands, for Northern England and for Scotland and will also boost digital services. So that's the positive side of these discussions, which, as you say, are taking place for the next two weeks and then will resume every six weeks until an agreement is worked out with the United States. Now, there is a negative side to this. Uh, the negative side, of course, is that will this accord be enough to replace the loss in trade with the European Union now that Britain has quit the EU? Uh, a lot of financial specialists say probably not because we're talking about 0.01 at the most percent increase in trade, which is a lot less uh, than the loss in trade with the EU. Um, and the second thing is that as far as uh, the United States is concerned, there will be strings attached to this deal. Notably, uh, many people in the United Kingdom are scared that that will mean that uh, Britain is forced to import uh, chlorinated chicken or beef with hormones or even maybe give up uh, part of its national health service, which has been at the forefront in the fight against COVID-19, uh, which the United States is keen to privatise. Donald Trump, the US president, has said this will not be the case, but there are fears in the UK that that might be one of the prerequisites before uh, this agreement is signed. Britain officially left the EU on January the 31st this year, but it's still negotiating a trade deal with the bloc that's uh, set to be reached by the 31st of December this year. How are those talks going? Well, let's put it this way. They could be going better, firstly, because they've been vastly delayed because of the coronavirus outbreak. They were due to start back in March. That didn't happen. Uh, then both negotiators, Michel Barnier for the European Union and David Frost for the United Kingdom, both went down uh, with the coronavirus. That delayed the talks even more. They're now back uh, meeting since the 20th of April by video conference. But there are really very, very big differences between what the two sides want. For example, the European Union is saying that they want individual agreements, for example, on fishing, on commercial ties and on finance. Uh, the uh, United Kingdom is saying, no, 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 we don't want that. We want a global agreement on all three of those brought together under one, one complete agreement where they're all worked out together. The European Union is saying, well, look, we're never going to reach an agreement on all of these issues by the end of 2020. You're going to have to ask for an extension. Britain is saying we're not going to ask for an extension because we don't want to contribute to the EU budget anymore. And therefore, we're going to definitely leave the EU and get this trade deal negotiated by the end of 2020. That is becoming even more of a long shot the more the impact of coronavirus is being felt around the European Union and, as you say, uh, in the uh, United Kingdom, where the death toll is now the highest of any EU country. Um, and there's also another aspect, and that is that many people in the United Kingdom are saying, well, uh, we should ask for a delay, which we have to ask for by July, because we could be hit with a double uh, whammy, if you like. First of all, the impact of the coronavirus, and secondly, the impact of no deal with the EU, which would be very bad for the economy. Thank you very much for the latest on the trade talks. Philip Tell, France 24's international affairs editor.